Hey, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about the one-handed square knot. Um, now, I'm assuming that you know how to tie a two-handed square knot already, but if you don't, I think it would be a great idea to go back and look at our two earlier videos about the two-handed square knot, because you'll n need that basic knowledge to understand this video well. All right. So now, as per norm, the first thing I want to do is talk about why uh, a one-handed square knot is called a one-handed square knot, um, and its advantages uh, over the two-handed square knot. So first things first, you do not, I repeat, do not tie a one-handed square knot with only one hand. In fact, you actually need two hands. However, what's different about the one-handed square knot from the two-handed square knot is that you need only need to use one of your hands actively while the other one's just kind of sitting there holding um, the string. So in that example, my left hand was just holding the string and my right hand was doing everything. Um, also, in the two-handed, both your hands are active and doing something. Um, other than just holding the string at some point. Um, so if you don't believe me, run through the two-handed square knot yourself and you'll see. Now the advantage of the one-handed square knot is are that it only requires one active hand. Um, so that requires less space and generally it feels more natural. So you'll find that it's very useful, especially in OB surgeries that have limited space. On a practical basis though, if you're not a medical student, you're probably going to be using one-handed square knot all the time. But if you are a medical student, you'll be expected to do the two-handed square knot. But it'll be really cool to know the one-handed square knot, and it might be something that you can do to kind of show off to your attending. All right, guys, let's get started. So first thing I want to talk about is make sure your starting position is right. And your starting position for the one-hand square knot is the same exact same thing as for the two-handed square knot. So cross your strings with the string in your left hand closer to your body and the string in your right hand further away from your body. So I want to make a special note about hand positions for the first throw. So your starting position, you should be holding the string in your right hand or your tying hand between your thumb and your middle finger. And you can support that with your little fingers, but essentially it's your thumb and the middle, and, uh, middle finger that's doing the most work. And the reason you want to do that is so that it frees up your index finger to make loops. So we're going to make our first throw now. Um, and the basic idea is the same exact thing as with the two-handed. So you're going to make a loop with one of your fingers, and then you're going to rotate one of these strings around the other to close the loop and make the knot. Right? And so I'm going to sh show you that. Now, but with a one-handed, it gets a little bit tricky, and so I'm going to show it to you really slow. And so you want to make sure your hand position is right, thumb and middle finger. Take your, take your index finger, make a loop, just like you would with a two-handed square knot. And now you want to flex your index finger. And by flexing your, your index finger, you're putting it behind the string in your right hand so that you can then extend your index finger and pull that string through and make that knot. And that's what that looks like. And again, I'll show you that a little bit faster. So hand position, index finger, loop, flex, extend and put the knot down. And so there you have it. That's your first throw. Now, the second throw is a little bit funky, uh, com especially compared to everything else that you've seen. But the basic idea is the same. The important thing here is that your starting position for your hand, so you should be holding the string with your thumb and your index finger for the second throw. Whereas for your first throw, you're holding it between your thumb and middle finger. So second throw, hold it like this. First throw, hold it like this. And the reason you want to hold your second throw like this is that it allows you to use your last three fingers as a point to start making the loop. And so you can see the loop right there. Right? And so that's the basic idea behind the second throw. So I'm going to show that to you slowly now. So again, make sure you're holding with your index finger and your thumb. Use the last three digits as a raffle to make that loop. Now, like in the first throw, you want to flex your middle finger. And so my middle finger is now behind the string in my right hand. And then you want to extend your middle finger so that you pull the string through and you make that knot. And notice my hands are crossed and put that knot down. And so that's it. Um, and I'm going to show you that really quickly once again. So again, make sure holding it right, loop, flex, extend, and put down the knot. And that's really it. And you can just 
uh, keep on going with this. So for your third throw, it's going to look exactly like your first throw. So hand position, uh, hold it between your thumb and your middle finger. Use your index finger to loop, flex, extend, put the knot down. Your fourth throw is exactly like your second throw. So you want to hold it between your index finger and your thumb, loop with your last three digits, flex your middle finger, extend your middle finger, and put the knot down. And you can just keep on doing this as long as you like, you know, whatever makes you happy. But most likely your attending is going to tell you how many times to do this. And that's really it. And so give me a second to untie this before we go to our take-home points. So our first take-home point is that essentially you're doing the same thing as with a two-handed square knot. Uh, but you're rotating the string end in your right hand uh, instead of the string end in your left hand. So you're just rotating it like that. Um, and remember, for each uh, throw, it's loop, flex, extend. Right? Second point, just like you, how you alternate between your index finger and your thumb to start throws in the two-handed square knot, you alternate between using your index finger and the last three digits to start throws for the one-handed. Also, like in the two-handed, you need to cross your hands on even throws. So throws number two, number four, etc. And lastly, here's another challenge for you. Can you do this with your left hand? And this is what it would look like. That's my challenge. Good luck.